Get up to rock, get up to burn, stand with the pride and burn for your desire. One day I noticed that my life was broken. It was not me who was controlling. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know what time it is. It's time for Blood Bowl. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Mauling League. Boy, we've got a really good one tonight. Tonight we've got knee, uh, not knee high to Nuffle. We got the Knights of Nuffle versus Dinnerbell Darlings. The current league champion, Clypheus versus Doug the Minotaur. Bound to be an excellent game. Two fantastic coaches with interesting uh, well, at least one interesting team choice. We'll take a look at those in just a second. But first, let's take a look at the standings here in week one of the Chaos Cup. As you can see, Division One hasn't got underway yet, but there are eight full teams in Division Division One, Division A. Let's call it Division A. Uh, lots of races represented in Division A. We have High Elves, High Elves, Chaos Dwarves, Lizardmen, Necro, Dark Elves, Skaven, Kemri, and Undead. Uh, we'll get uh, Division A games uh, going tomorrow, I believe, on the schedule. But tonight it's going to be Division B. And we can take a look. Currently in Division B, that's kind of catchy. Sitting in first place with a TD diff of three. They won their first game here in week one. Skitter Twitch, Die Die. We saw Berserker Tempest take that team to a, a, a resounding win a couple nights ago. Uh, put on a clinic with what you can do with Skaven won his game as well. Uh, but tonight it's going to be Clypheus versus Doug the Minotaur. Clypheus coaching a Brett team. Doug the Minotaur, relatively new to the league. He was in last year's Dungeon Bowl, had a fantastic showing with Dark Elves. He's bringing Dwarves in for the Chaos Cup to open this season. Two really good coaches. Again, Clypheus is the league champion. He won the competition with Chaos Dwarves. He's bringing Brett in for this competition. That's, we've we've already seen that. We don't need to know who's playing. We've already seen that. Let's take a look at Clypheus' roster. Knights of Nuffle coming in with 11-man roster, as you do at the beginning of a season. Everybody has to start with a TV 1000. He's coming in with a TV of 990. This is a team that we really need to talk about. You don't see Brett too often. This is the first time we've seen Brett in the league he has the four blitzers they look like the star players of this roster as you can see they have block uh they have catch and they have dauntless he has two blockers they have wrestle and then lineman with fen this is a very odd combination of skills um let's talk about the skills first and i'll talk about how you how you might want to play them so you can look at the stats here the blitzers have a movement of seven that's pretty good uh av of eight uh, pretty good as well. The linemen have decent stats. Their AG is low, their AV is low, but they, they make up for that with Fend. The Blitzers have block. That means that uh, one of the die faces is going to be safe for them on blocks. So that's really good. They have catch. They double as catchers. That's really good as well. Catch is going to give you a free reroll on a, a catch attempt. And then you have Dauntless. Dauntless means that when they go up against somebody who has a strength that's higher than them, they're going to roll a d6. They're going to add the d6 to their own strength. If that exceeds their opponent's strength, then they will treat this block as if their strength matches. For example, if a blitzer comes in, they have a strength of three, they're going to go up against a strength five player, maybe a, a minotaur or something. They roll a d6. 
They roll a three on the d6, three plus three is six, that beats five. Now the Blitzer's strength will be as if it is five on the block. You might say, who cares? Well, one, that gives you a one die block, that's great. But more importantly, that means you only need one assist to get the two die block. So this is a very, very good skill uh, and can really shut down some of these plays where you see on a, on a chaos team, you know, the, the frenzy Minotaur might come after you. Uh, you can shut you can shut him down uh, fairly well with with Dauntless. The two blockers, not your not your average blitzer, right? You, you see the, the four blitzers are your quote unquote blitzers on Brett. The two blockers might fill in the role of a standard blitzer, but they don't have the block skill. What do they have? They have wrestle. So what that means is when they get knocked down or, or rather when they take a block, uh, they can choose to just get knocked down and fine. It's cool. There's no turnover, but there's no armor roll. So this is, uh, you'll see this used on fragile teams a lot. You'll see this used on elven teams. Uh, they, they usually have an AV of seven. They don't want to spend their time. Uh, I'm sorry. They don't want to take the risk of the armor roll and being uh, sent off the pitch, right? With a, with a casualty or a KO. Fen can, uh, uh, I'm going to mix those up all night. Fen and wrestle. Wrestle <laughs> can help stop that happening. Not too valuable, in my opinion, with the blocker. It's very situational. And I think that's what it's going to come down to uh, a lot with Brett. You'll hear me saying that it's a situational team. In fact, I think it's a pitch control team. The uh, the, the roster is rounded out here with six, uh, five linemen, excuse me. They all have Fen. So blockers will not be able to follow up on the linemen. So what do all these combinations mean? Uh, oh, Clyphus, thank you so much for the gift sub. I really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Welcome, Leave it to Ralphs. Welcome to the stream. So th this is a goofy combination, right? Very strange combination of skills on a roster. How do you play? Again, I think this is pitch control. So Fend allows you uh, to back off for free, right? So if somebody blocks your lineman, they can't follow up. Your lineman's gonna be free to move. He's not gonna be locked down. He's not gonna to have to take a dodge, uh, which he's not gonna do with an AG of two anyway. Uh, it allows them to move around the pitch. You have the blitzers with wrestle. That can do the same thing. You can take out a key, key player using the wrestle skill, just knock him to the ground. Now you've got space to move. And then your blitzers. These are gonna be the guys that are handling the ball, that are making the blocks, that are doing all the work. Uh, they're the ones to look out for on this roster. But what Clyphus is going to have to do is he got, he's going to have to try to leverage this bizarre combination of skills to try to exert pitch control, to try to say, I am going here, you're going to be over there, you can't come this way. We've seen Clyphus play that way before last season, all season long. He was a pitch control coach. He really likes to get around a defensive line or even sometimes an offensive line and start picking players off, start pulling them out of their formation saying, uh, you want to be here, right? You want to be grouped up on the line, I'm not gonna let you. You want to be a free safety where you can move around in the backfield, I'm not gonna let you. And and that gels. I don't think Brett is a particularly, I, I think Brett is a very difficult team to play. Uh, again, as a pitch control team, it's very, very hard, but Clyphus is a pitch controlled coach. So I think that gels pretty well. And I'm excited to see what he does with it this season, or at very least in the Chaos Cup. Three TRRs, that's exactly where you want to be. Three rerolls is plenty. He'll be up against Doug the Minotaur with Dinner Bell Darlings. He's coming in at a TV of 970. This is a Dwarven team. I think Dwarves are fantastic right out of the box. Uh, very good team. Uh, they do have their weakness, which obviously you can see they're very, very slow. But man, oh man, are they res uh, resilient. Most of these players have an AV of nine. Uh, to break armor, you roll a 2d6, you've got to roll higher than their AV. 10 plus is hard to hard to roll. It's a lot harder to roll than, say, uh, an AV of 7. So, very, very resilient. They all come with block. That means the both down result's not going to knock them down. If that weren't enough, they all have fixed skulls. If you roll on the injury table, a 2 through 7 would stun you, an 8 or a 9 would knock you out, and a 10 plus is what we call a casualty. You might hear me call it an injury as well. Not for dwarves. For dwarves, the eight counts as a stun instead. That's what Thick Skull gets you. So all this combines to mean that they are very, very hardy and very, very difficult to take off the pitch. It is so difficult to take a dwarf off the pitch um, that you, you really don't want to have to spend too much time 
going after a particular uh, dwarven player. And really, you just want to leverage your strength against their weakness, and their weakness is their movement. With an MA of four, uh, they generally want to be grouped up. They're going to get skills that they're more than likely they're going to pick up guard, which is going to give them the free assist, even if they're in a tackle zone. Uh, on offense, because they don't have a lot of movement, uh, they want to stay in a cage. They want to stay grouped up because of their resiliency. And because of that, even though his runner has an MA of six, all these Longbeards have an MA of four. It's going to be very tough to move this cage down pitch. Defenders really against a Dwarven team just want to stop that forward movement. If you can hold them to one or two spaces a turn, he's just not going to have the movement to get into the end zone. But again, Doug the Minotaur, very good coach. We'll see what he does with Kevin Bacon here, the runner. The runner has sure hands. The Troll Slayer here, interesting player. He has block and thick skull naturally, but he also has Dauntless, which we've talked about with the Knights of Nuffle. And he has Frenzy. Frenzy is a very, very scary skill. Uh, scary for new players, but also scary for players in the hands of a good coach. Frenzy means when you take a block, if you don't knock down the, the opponent, if you just push them back, you must follow up and you get another block. This can be very, very good. If you're chucking, say, four dice on a on a piece, chances are you're gonna knock them down. But you have to be careful with that forced follow-up. New coaches can get into a lot of trouble with that forced follow-up. They'll take the block, it'll result in a push, they'll have a forced follow-up, now they're in an uphill block situation. I doubt we'll see Doug the Minotaur in that situation. Again, he's a very clearly a seasoned coach. He was here in the Dungeon Bowl, had a really good showing, showing with the Dark Elves as well. He has three TRRs to come into this game with. Again, plenty of TRRs. TV of 960 means that nothing's gonna happen in the inducement phase. Uh, Dinner Bell Darlings is gonna get 20K. He has 30K in the treasury. That's 50K if he wants to spend every last gold coin that he has, he can pick up an extra team training, but I highly doubt that's gonna happen. I don't think he needs it. Man, I, I gotta tell you, I'm really excited to see this Brett team play. <laughs> I, I, I think Brett is very, very interesting. Uh, I also like the theming of it. <laughs> so, well, we'll see if the coaches are ready first and then I'll talk about the theming. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah, both coaches are in Discord. So we'll see if the game, whoa, we'll see if the game's underway. All right, it looks like they're about to get underway on the inducement phase. But so if you looked at the <laughs> real quick, we'll take a look uh, while they get through inducements. Uh, I, I just <laughs> I think the theming so, so fun for Brett. So, you know, the Dwarven team, they look like dwarves naturally. But Brett here, <laughs> so you can see, you know, the, the blitzers. These are the big players, the high, the high dollar, the big money players. They're they're like your knights. Look at that. Look at that beautiful armor, and that regalia. Look at all that. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And then he has the blockers. All right, not bad. Not bad players, decent stats. They have wrestle. Uh, they're kind of like squires, right? They're kind of just like, uh, they're aspiring knights. <laughs> and then you've got the linemen. These are the cheapos, 40K, <laughs> not too resilient, bad AG. Oh, they're just dirty. <laughs> they're dirty peasants. <laughs> I think that's cute. <laughs> All right, let's see if this game. Let's see if this game's ready to ready to go. And it looks like it is. My key. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for showing up. I hope you'll enjoy a game of Blood Bowl. I love this game, man. This game is so much fun. Knights of Nuffle setting up first. It looks like they're going to be on defense here. Blood Bowl played in two halves of eight turns each. On each turn, you can action every single one of your pieces on your side. If you fail a die roll, generally, that's going to be the end of your turn. It's called a turnover, naturally. And that means that coaches are gonna to wanna to take their least risky actions first and their most risky actions last. New coaches, the Blood Bowl, will often complain about the dice. I mean, new new players to any game will complain about the die dice, right? But um, you'll, you'll quickly find that, that Blood Bowl has so much agency to it that better coaches will take the dice into account and they'll take actions that don't require a certain die result. 
Uh, but because of that, your opponents can counterplay you, and counterplay is what we're here for. <laughs> My key says, I played it for years, I still complain about the dice. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> Sometimes, Nuffle is cruel. <laughs> Dinnerbell Darlings is set up on offense here. Three-man defensive line. Here's the kick. The weather's going to stay just the same, and it's going to be a touchback. Dinnerbell Darlings are not going to have to pick this ball up, and we're going to get this game underway on turn number one. SP Beaver says it's only not done by Descent Dice. I swear I've angered Nuffle somehow. <laughs> Descent Dice can be cruel, too. That X, man. <laughs> Good block on the line. Two linemen remain. Two die block. Remember, all these dwarves have the block skill. That means that both down results doesn't affect a player who has the block skill. So these dwarves are going to be just fine with that. Took the push instead of the knockdown there. Line's been blocked down. Lots of players left to action here. Hopefully we've got the uh, audio issues uh, sorted out for this game here. Let me know if uh, any of the audio is uh, whacked out or missing. <laughs> Last game, we had no game audio at all. <laughs> Good blitz in the left wide zone here. Knocks down the number three blitzer, Gnarly. It's going to move right back around the line of scrimmage. Resets. Thank you very much. Good, good, good. good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Yeah, the audio was a little whacked out last game. <laughs> Turn one, setting up a cage at mid pitch here. Ball carrier on their own four yard line. Standard four point cage. Well, really it's five. He's got the uh, number 12 long beard. Soy Rogers. Everybody's named after food, aren't they? The big red goo. <laughs> Gravy Crockett. General, uh, General So. Kevin Bacon himself. Kevin Bacon, marvelous actor turned blood bowl player. And my whiny, thank you so much for this sub, the gift sub. Very kind of you. Thank you very, very much. Nice to see you. SP Beaver says Brett didn't set up anyone deep. Are they not afraid of the dwarves running past them? The dwarves with their mighty movement of four? <laughs> here comes the blitz. Two die blitz on the right wide zone. It's gonna get the knockdown here on the number 11 Longbeard, Wyatt Burp. Again with that massive AV of nine, it's a 10 plus to break armor. He rolled a four. This Brett team is gonna be seeing a lot of that today. Here you can see Clypheus again. We talk about pitch control. He loves to do this. He's sending the Blitzer down behind the cage. This is a very, very slow cage. Remember, dwarves are not very fast. When you Blitz, that's basically a movement and a block in one turn. One piece on your turn can do that, any piece you want. And uh, the Blitz eats up one of your movement points. So you can move, Blitz, and then continue your movement if you wish. Two of the linemen are going to move into the left of wide zone here to try to try to screen out the dwarves here just to to keep this cage from shimmying to the left. Thirty-seven seconds left here for Clive, his current league champion. Fantastic showing last season. He took a chaos dwarf team to the championship. Won. Won the season, won the Blood Bowl. He had a goblin team in the Spike Magazine trophy, I believe. Not so Tristy Patches says, let's see some frenzy surfing. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Leverage that frenzy. Life is resetting his defense here, trying to stop this cage dead in its tracks. Turn two back to Dinner Bell Darlings. Two die block gets the pal here. Number 14 is going to break armor. Gets a KO. Well done. One man player advantage for the Dinner Bell Darlings. This is what dwarves do. 
There, oh, it breaks armor again. This is AV7, so a lot easier than AV8. To break armor, you roll a 2d6. You need to beat their armor value or their AV. So if you imagine rolling a 2d6, there's lots of ways. There, there are a lot more ways to roll an 8 than there are to roll a 10. Or an 8 or higher, I should say, versus a 10 or higher. You'll see Dwarven teams do this a lot, and it'll get a lot more dangerous as he starts to skill up here. Uh, but they're so resilient that they'll stay on the pitch, and they'll just start beating up players. They'll pick up the guard skill. That'll give them those assists, even if they're in tackle zones. Each of those assists is going to add a plus one to their strength when they take blocks. They'll start taking two, three die blocks very, very easily. Number nine is going to move forward to mark the number seven lineman, Nick, over in the right wide zone. Here comes the blitz. Two die blitz. It's going to get the knockdown here. Thanks to the block skill. It's a stun. Two stuns. That's a very good stun. Let's open up the ride. Uh, the ride. <laughs> the right wide zone. Not so trusty fashion says, I really don't look forward to seeing them get lots of guard. Yeah, it can be very frustrating. It's going to shift this cage over to the right a few spaces. Even with all these successful armor breaks, uh, I think Clypheus is, is a little okay with this. He's going to have to reset his defense. But really, he's just trying to stop this this forward momentum. Turn two for the Knights of Nuffle. Find themselves a little out of position, but um, not too bad. They're going to have to to move the lineman. They'll probably move the lineman first. Maybe move Sar. But number two here and number four are both marked. That means they're going to have to take a dodge to get out of this zone. They both have an AG of three, so it's not. I was gonna say it's not super risky. It's risky, <laughs> but uh, it's not it's not uh, insurmountable. AG two, you probably don't want to do it. Uh, he might just take the block instead. It's always better to try to set up the block. If you can set up the two die to break a player free, you want to do that rather than doing the dodge. The odds are much greater. <laughs> SP Beaver says block versus block, take the one die block. Yeah, not if you want to make not if you want somebody to get free. Oh well, he's gonna take the one die, gets a push here. But now what do you do? Now what do you do? This cage is gonna move forward. Unless he gets somebody up here in the right wide zone. Mark number three, two die block. Mark's number 10, rather. Gets a push. Still has number five to action. He has the two players that have crossed the line of scrimmage as well. One is marked. That's the number 10 lineman with an AG of two. I think a dodge is unlikely. And number five, Sar. He's going to move in the right wide zone. Try to cover cover that ground, play some defense. 34 seconds left for Clypheus. Interesting choice trying to take these blocks over here. Not necessarily a bad choice. Here's the blitz. Going to be a both standing results. That might be the end of his turn. He might want to dodge this Blitzer out. He has 13 seconds to decide. Nope, he's going to stay put. He doesn't want to risk it. Turn three for the Dinner Bell Darlings. I imagine the Blitz is coming on number five here. He's going to take the two die on number eight. Gets a push. That is fine.
<laughs> Not so trusty patches says, whoever wins, we all lose. <laughs> Frenzy follow up. This is with the, the troll slayer. He's going to get the knockdown here. Looking for that eight plus. Ben means he's not going to be able to follow up. Doesn't break armor. And there he's going to take the blitz on number two instead. He doesn't want to commit to the right wide zone. He wants to stay at mid pitch so he has movement options. That is just fine. Minute 25 remains in turn three here for Doug the Minotaur. All three team rerolls remain. You can reroll dice exactly one time. Some skills give you a free reroll, such as catch or pass or dodge. But otherwise, you have team rerolls. You may spend one per turn on any die roll you wish that you make. Three is a pretty good spot to be in. You get back all your team rerolls at the beginning of a half. So both the teams currently have three rerolls for the half. That's three rerolls for eight turns. Uh, not a bad number to have. You will often see teams just stay with three TRRs. Three team rerolls, not a bad number. It's it's usually better to get them at the beginning of your team. When a team is fresh before they've played a game, uh, team rerolls are half price. So you want to get as many as you as you can afford without compromising your, your team composition. Ball carrier moves down pitch to the eight yard line. <laughs> was that a GFI? Was that a failed GFI? It was. <laughs> so when you move, you can move your full movement allowance. MA4 means you can move four spaces. All players can also move an additional space. It's called a GFI or a go for it. You can see the, the dice here, the, the dice icons. These are GFI spaces for this particular player. You can move up to two additional spaces. Each space you have to roll a D6. If you roll a one, you fall on your face. <laughs> and so as we all know, a one in six chance of failure is approximately a 900% chance of failure. But thankfully, SP Beaver has graciously lowered that GFI failure rate from 900% to a paltry, a measly 99%. Thank you very much. Two die block in the left wide zone is gonna be a PAL result. It's gonna knock number 13 backwards. It's gonna free up number 11. The linemen, remember all these linemen have Fen, so any blocks they take can't be followed up, or rather any blocks they receive cannot be followed up. <laughs> Not so trusty patches demands that we raise the GFI failure rate. He wants some snow. We could have it. The weather may change at the beginning of every drive. Number 11 moves back to get in front of the cage, trying to play some defense here. Dog the Minotaur with excellent movement so far. Turn three is already crossed the line of scrimmage. Clive is really deciding what to do with his, his defense. Oh, he took the one dive lock, got the skull. Double skulls on the reroll. And that's going to be a turnover. Took the one dive lock. That's fairly risky. Got the skull, spent the reroll. Didn't want this turn to end. Got the skull again. Two die block is going to be a good knockdown. Oh, breaks armor again. These these linemen are very, very fragile with that AV of seven. Gets a stun. 
<laughs> Speed Beaver says maybe Nuffle's not pleased with the silent K in the name Calypheus added. <laughs> it is sacrilegious. <laughs> Dinner Bell Darling still with the Blitz on the table. Currently have a one-man player advantage. Cruising down pitch with this runner, Kevin Bacon, on the Knights of Nuffles 20-yard line. <laughs> Terrawind uses. At least it's only silent letters and not the whole player names that are silent. But was there... Was there a team with names that I, I can't I can't remember a single team whose names I would not pronounce. Not one. Not one. Two that block gets the pal here on the number 11 lineman Nave. Doesn't break the armor. It's going to get knocked down. Probably going to move number 12 back. Soy Rogers to protect the ball carrier. He's moved the long beard back as well. Gravy Crockett. Indeed. There they go. Good positioning by Doug the Minotaur. So all these players, they all exert tackle zones in each adjacent space. Uh, orthogonal and diagonal are all adjacent in the game of Blood Bowl. So you can see with this spacing, he's covering all, you know, three wide here. And this player here is covering three wide here. So very good positioning by Doug the Minotaur. Turn four for the Knights of Nuffle. Man. Man. <laughs> what do you do? I, I think getting aggressive on the defense, trying to get behind the cage here, um, wasn't worth it. <laughs> wasn't worth it. <laughs> I, I, uh, I've talked about this before, especially last season, but I, I think against Dwarves, I really favor just staying in front of them and holding them to one space a turn. Just, just depending on your team composition, right? Take the two dies push him away and stay in front of him. I played Wood Elves last season, and that's generally set up your Blitzer to take a two-die block, try to get chain blocks out of that, and then everybody else dodges away with their AG of four. Two-die black gets a push on number 13 here on the left side of the pitch near the line of scrimmage. It's a very good point. Not so trusty Patches says, although now he needs to make sure he doesn't leave too many turns in the half. Doug the Mintar was on offense here to start the game. Here's a foul. He's getting three assists on this foul. Neck got called off the pitch off oh. went for the foul had three assists got called off the pitch number eight is out for the rest of the game when you go for a foul it's it's a straight armor roll you don't have to roll a block it goes straight through to an armor roll and an injury roll and you get a plus one on your roll for every assist the downside is, on any of those rolls, if you roll doubles, you're called off the pitch unless you have a bribe for the ref or some skill that negates it. Doug the Minotaur naturally setting up for the stall here. He doesn't need to score. He's in very good position, a very resilient team. He can stall this out very easily until turn eight, so long as nothing goes haywire. I block. Well done. Well done. Dinnerbell Darling is just picking apart this Brett team. I think Dwarven teams are, are really, really good out of the box. I think Brett teams are very, very challenging to play at any TV level. Mikey says, is this a campaign playthrough? Yeah, it's a season. So we it, in our league, we have uh, four competitions per season, uh, three of which are open. So anybody is allowed to to join and play any of those three competitions and the way the rules are set up uh you can miss a competition you can miss two competitions and you're still not out of it 
Uh, and then the fourth competition is an Invitational. That's the championship. That's the Blood Bowl. And that uh, gets... That's that's a duke. A duke? A duke? A duke out? <laughs> that's a fight to determine who the, who the league champion will be. Blitz coming up. Two die Blitz gets the knockdown on Wyatt Burp. He really wants to take Wyatt Burp out of this game. Hoping he can get that 10 plus. Doesn't break armor. He'll absolutely follow up. One minute, 18 seconds left in turn. Number five. <laughs> Tara Wendy, you praise to Nuffle. She's hoping this Brett team can make something happen. It looks like Clypheus is uh, resigned to the score. I think he has to be. And so he's uh, switching gears here, trying to get these blocks, trying to take some players out the pitch, trying to put himself in a better position for the second half of this game. Knights of Nuffle will be on offense to start the second half of the game. Mikey says, oh, interesting. A league definitely uh, perks my interest. Yeah, uh, so we're in the middle of the Chaos Cup, but once the Chaos Cup's over, uh, feel free to join us. Uh, the next competition will be the Spike Magazine Trophy. Again, you can you can hop in mid-season and uh, come play with us. I, we just love this game, man. <laughs> we love this game. Turn six for the Dinner Bell Darlings. They are almost certainly going to score this half. And that means the next three turns of the first half of this game is just going to be a boxing match. Here's the first one. Two die blitz on number 11. You can see Doug the Minotaur going after the players that are the easiest to take off the pitch. I think that's a smart move. Going after the AV7 players, trying to increase his advantage here for the second half of the game. Tried the 50-50 dodge, didn't work out. <laughs> Not so trusty patches, thank you for the bits. <laughs> yeah, nothing to do but to beat up on each other. Two die block gets the push here. Sound alerts are quiet, kind of quiet. All right, let's turn those up. Turn them up a little bit. Next time we have one, let me know if it's uh, too high, too low, or just right, please. Foul on number nine. <laughs> six, six assists on the foul on number nine. Let's go. Let's go. Bricks Arbor gets the KO. Well done. Does not get called off the pitch. Of course he doesn't. The, the ref just can't, can't see through this gaggle of players. Well done by Clypheus. Back to a one-man player advantage for the Dinner Bell Darlings. That's right, the ref, the ref is taken off for the rest of the game. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Where, there he is. There's no way he could see that. <laughs> oh, cool. Thank you, not-so-trusty patches. Two turns of, of punches left here. Doug the Minotaur's turn to try to take out some players. He's going to try to take out number nine here. He's going to get the two die block here. Gets the knockdown. 
Breaks armor, got the KO, well done. Back up to a two-man player advantage here for the Dinnerbell Darlings. At the beginning of every drive, all the knockout players are going to have an opportunity to come back on the pitch. It's a 50-50 die roll, whether they do or not. There are ways to make that uh, easier. Turn seven, penultimate turn here for Knights of Nuffle in the first half. Game currently tied. It'll almost certainly end one to zero. But the Knights of Nuffle will be on offense to start the second half of the games. They are very much not out of it. Another thing to consider with, uh, with fouling, not only is it fairly risky, but if you get called off the pitch, that's it. You have no chance of coming back on for the rest of the game, unlike a, a knockout player. SBB says time to dodge in and block down the ball carrier. Nope. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> One minute to play for Clafius here. He's, he's deciding uh, where his blitz is going to be, who he wants to try to, to take out. He's going to leave the cage alone. Looks like he's going after number 13, Queso Bill himself, famed restaurateur turned Blood Bowl player. It's the team who didn't score. That That's that's who's going to get the ball. Two die blocks, spends the reroll here. Why not? He was looking for the knockdown, got the push instead. Still has his blitz. I imagine he wants the blitz with either number... Th All right, with number three. <laughs> either number three or number two. Takes the blitz again, only gets a push. It's so hard to take these players off the pitch and it doesn't help <laughs> when you can't even knock them down. <laughs> Trying to set up his final turn of blocks here. Three seconds to go. Not going to worry about the surf uh, opportunity. It would almost certainly not come up. Turn eight. Final turn of the first half. Dinner Bell Darlings are up. They're going to score. Well done. Excellent offensive showing by Doug the Minotaur with this Dwarven team. Did we have a Dwarven team in Season 2? I remember Merrick's Dwarves in Season 1. Let's see if anybody comes back on the pitch for Knights of Nuffle. No, they will not. But there's only one turn left in the half, so they're going to get another reroll, basically, at the beginning of the second half. The Knights of Nuffle are going to get one turn to try to score. They cannot conceivably do it unless there is a riot. If there's a riot on the kickoff, then there'll be one more turn added to the half. That will give the Knights of Nuffle enough turns to be able to get into the end zone conceivably. And you can see the Dinner Bell Darlings are going to leave three players on the line and move everybody back into the end zone as you do when you set up your formation you must put three on the line that means three have to be on the line of scrimmage in this center uh center area so these seven spaces here and you may put up to two in either wide zone anywhere everything else is fair game so he puts his mandatory three on the line and everybody else he wants to save he doesn't want to give up the blocks here to knights of nuffle the knights of nuffle are going to put five on the line he's got to put everybody on the well everybody except the receiver
going to receive with air the number one blitzer. It's going to hope Nuffle is kind on this kick. Doug the Mintar does not have a kicker. Knights of Nuffle are going to get an extra reroll. That's not going to be enough. They'll take the blocks on the line, and that'll be the end of the half. Three blocks. Maybe a foul if he's feeling a little cheeky. Two die block on the right side of the line. Gets the knockdown on the big ragu. That's one. Setting up for the foul of number 10. Ugh. Two die block. Both standing result. Probably gonna burn the reroll here. We'll see what he decides to do. He doesn't have to. Fair enough. Another two die attempt, this time a push. He's gonna get a chain push, not what he was looking for here, but that's okay. Will he follow up is the question. No, he wants to keep that assist for the next block on number 11. Remember, he still has his blitz, so he'll probably take the blitz on number 12 if this, blitz, if this block works out, which it didn't. <laughs> blitz is going to come up on number 12, I have to imagine. Going for the ball pickup. He's going for some SVP on the pass first. It's going to be a quick pass. If it works out, it's going to be one SVP. Didn't work out. Spends the reroll here. Well done. Got the SPP on number one. SPP stands for star player points. They're effectively the experience points of Blood Bowl. Players gain SPP in a variety of ways. Scoring touchdowns, completing passes, uh, injuring uh, or causing casualties, I should say, on other opponents or being the MVP. They all award a certain number of SPP and you can use that SPP to level up and therefore earn new skills. That's the end of the first half. One to zero. Doug the Minotaur is going to be in the lead with his dinner bell darlings. The Knights of Nuffle are going to be up on offense now. We'll see if he gets back any of his KO'd players. Odds are he'll get back one, but he got back both. Well done. The Knights of Nuffle up on offense. Clyphus again won last year with a Chaos Dwarf team. Really leveraged those uh, Bull Centaurs to their maximum advantage. Uh, we saw how he ran a, a fairly bashy team. Uh, and he ran it a little non-traditionally, like we said. He was a pitch control coach. Uh, we'll see if he'll come into his own here with the Brett team. Uh, early, early in the season, right? We're in week one of the first competition of the season. Coaches are going to have a few games, right, to try to figure out their teams. Uh, this is no different here. SP Beaver says, I forgot players called off by the ref count as dead and injured. Yeah, once you're called off, you're you're out. You're in the, the penalty box. Doug the Minotaur is setting up with a wide defensive line here. He has his, outer def his outside defensive tackles very very wide and then he has a, a a close contingent here he's got the four linebackers and the four defensive backs all closed up at center pitch I think this is fair he's giving up the wide zones but he's okay with that if the Knights of Nuffle want to commit to a wide zone that could spell spell trouble for him because he's going to move or rather he's going to lose uh, the ability to move in one direction which will allow the defense to to double up as as we say, right, to, to collapse down on the offense because they, they have less pitch that they have to defend against. The Knights of Nuffle are not, not a particularly good passing team. Doug the Minotaur is not worried about it. Cheering fans, the Knights of Nuffle are going to get an extra reroll. Nuffle being kind here. Turn nine, the Knights of Nuffle are now on offense. Two die block at the line gets the pow against Soy Rogers. Good knockdown. Follows up. Next block on the line. We'll take these blocks first before picking up the ball. When you're new to Blood Bowl, you're, you often uh, you feel compelled to want to get this ball in your hands, but it's a lot less risky to take the blocks first. In fact, 
you can often save the ball pickup for last. And if it doesn't work out, you don't have to waste a reroll on it because the ball could stay on the ground and still be relatively safe. All the blocks on the line are taken. Blitz still available. Also, Trusty Patch says turn nine from outer space. I like playing nine from outer space. <laughs> Good pickup on the three plus. Moves up to his own four yard line, dead center. One minute, eight seconds remaining for the Knights of Nuffle here. SP Beer says, I really want to see teams pass more this season. I think you will get your wish. We have a lot of agile teams this season. Last season was defined by the Bashy teams. This season has a lot of agility-based teams. We have, I believe, three Skaven teams. That's agility, that's speed. Tudai Blitz gets the push on number 14, Paul Funyon. Not so trusty patch. It says you can leave it on the ground unless you're playing against Wood Elder Skaven who will get through and nab it. Yeah, yeah. More often than not, you can leave it on the ground, depending on where it is, depending on who you're playing, depending on your formation. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. If you're up against a really fast or a very agile team, you need to be careful. I have to imagine Doug the Minotaur is going to play a very different defensive game here than we saw Clafius play in the first half. Doug the Minotaur probably going to be a lot more reactionary rather than proactive. He's going to let Clafius make decisions and then he's going to want to counter those decisions. He's up 1-0. He doesn't need to take risks. He just needs to stop the score. He's not up against a team that, that has a wacky passing game like Wood Elves or any Elves really who like to flood the flood the uh, backfield with receivers. Uh, he just really needs to stay in front of the ball. Mikey asks, does AI difficulty factor in the KO chance? Nope, it's all dice. All things being equal, KOs come back onto the pitch at the beginning of a drive on a four plus, but there are things you can do to make the odds better. First turn of the second half of the dinner barrel darlings. They're going to take their blitz on number five. They're going to get a push out of this follows up with the number six blitzer general Custer. Oh, I stand corrected. He is getting aggressive. So he is playing a pitch control game here. So you can see what he's doing here. He's moving his players into this hole he just opened, and he's cutting off these two Brett players from the rest of his team. He's effectively reducing the strength of this offense. Again, this is not a passing team. That doesn't mean that Clavius can't pass. You can do anything you want. <laughs> You're the coach. <laughs> but uh, he's starting to, to whittle down this team, cut these, te these players off, uh, they're now out of position, and it's going to make them a lot tougher to be effective. SP Beaver says he needs to be careful moving them too far back. He is dwarves. They are slow. If Clypheus is able to break away, it's going to be very tough for Doug the Minotaur to, to catch up. Yeah, not so trusty patches says Doug really needs to watch out for overcommitting, uh, reiterating SP Beaver's concerns. And uh, they're very real concerns. You can see these players here. This player only has an MA of four. He can move here at most, and that's a risky move because he'd have to roll two GFIs. Whereas the current ball carrier has a full three more movements than this player has.
SP Beer says a nice pass inside and he can just run down. That is very true. He can kick the uh, he can kick the ball carrier out to the right. He can get a quick pass out of this to the Blitzer. Remember, they have the catch skill and the Blitzer can take off. Now, the Blitzer won't be safe because uh, Doug still has some uh, linebackers here that can get to him. But that's an option. I don't I don't really think he wants to take that option, but it is an option. Two die block gets the push was all on the line. The problem with running one player down pitch, that's fine if you're Skaven or Wood Elves or something and you run a player or maybe two players down pitch um, that have, say, their blodge, they have block and dodge. Uh, or <laughs> or should we say a strength four ward answer? <laughs> wow, got the injury on General Custer. Well done. Well done. The league thanks you. Uh, it's no long term effect. <laughs> Everyone was holding their breath, hoping this would be a permanent injury. He will take the. <laughs> Thank you for the bits. <laughs> he will take General Custer out of the game, though. <laughs> what are we at? What are we at now? It's one to one, right? Yeah, 10, 10 v ten on the pitch. No advantage. SP Beaver cheering for this offense. <clears throat> Thank you for the bits. Five. <laughs> Two seconds to go. <laughs> Looks like that'll be the end of the turn. Oh, he is going for the pass. He's going to go for the pass. Here it is. Quick pass. Good pass. He gets the free reroll on the catch. Doesn't need it. Now what's going to happen? Is he going to move him down to number 10? Not so trusty patches. Thank you for the bits. <laughs> He has a whole one minute, 37 seconds here to decide what uh, uh, Doug the Minotaur, that is, decide what he wants to do. Yeah, he did run out of time. I just, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I imagine the Blitz is going to... Breaks armor on the left side of the pitch. Gets a stun. Stun's not going to matter too much. Blitz is going to have to happen on the ball carrier. He's going to want to block away number five before he takes this blitz. If he blocks, if he blocks down number five, he can get number 10 in for the assist. I guess number 10 is actually going to take the block. He's got Kevin Bacon for the assist. Gonna mark number 10 just in case. Remember, the name of the game is take your least risky actions first and your most risky actions last. Movement is as low risk as it gets. There are no die rolls. So he's gonna move players into position first. There's that assist from, uh, oh, he's gonna take it with Gravy Crockett, fair enough. And he's gonna take the blitz with Kevin Bacon. Here we go, two die blitz. Gets a push. Follows up and now Mnemonic is in trouble. Here's that second block, gets the pow. Where's the ball gonna scatter? Scatters into an advantageous position for the dinner bell darlings. Well done by Doug the Minotaur. Really chancy pass there. Clyphus got spooked a little bit. Wanted to get it down pitch, ran out of time. This ball carrier got blocked down for it. Yeah, that was fantastic block order. You heard me. I thought he was going to take the block with the big ragu. Nope. Much better this way. Turn 11 for Knights of Nuffle now. Can they recover this ball? It is going to be very, very difficult. And I'm not sure. Boy. Boy, you're, you're really extending yourself if you want to get it back this turn. If you don't, you probably don't win, but... <laughs> <laughs> He's got to do something, but if he does it, he puts his team at risk uh, for later weeks in this competition.
<laughs> Looks like he's gonna set up the... What is he setting up here? He's marked Davy Crockett. He now has Kevin Bacon marked. Stands up to mark Queso Bill at mid-pitch. Number nine, Knock. He's going to move toward this ball. Blitz still on the table. Poor number 10. Boy, he's... He's going to have to find the strength within him <laughs> to, to stay on this pitch. Not so trusty patches says chain block onto the ball. We'll see. He's in so many tackle zones right now. We'll see what he's trying to do. When you take a block, uh, you if you knock down your opponent or you push them back, there is one face that doesn't push them back. Takes the one die block. He's going to get the knockdown here. The follow up. There's no way he's dodging on this ball. Is there? Is there? There's no way. I don't. I don't. I refuse to believe it. Yeah. Turn 11 back to Dinner Ball Darlings. Uh, when you get blocked down, um, you'll usually get pushed back a space. You get pushed into one of the three spaces directly behind you, chosen by the person who blocked you. So if those three spaces are all full, then you move in anyone you want, and then the person there gets pushed back in the same manner. That's called a chain push or a chain block. SP Beaver says, that's what I would do, but I follow the rule. Always push onto the ball. Let Nuffle sort out the, the random scatter. <laughs> Two die blitz. Clean knockout. He is going to scatter onto the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> the two blitzers both fail. Remember, they have the catch skill. <laughs> so both of these blitzers <laughs> failed on their free rerolls, and then the ball scattered onto the end, uh, onto the sideline. <laughs> oh, those guys didn't put in the work <laughs> in trading this week. <laughs> it was a tough catch to make. It was a one third chance. Didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> One die block. Skull's gonna have to reroll this. Gets the pal this time. Nine plus will take air off the pitch. Didn't break armor. Under a minute to play in turn 11. Sure hands works out. Kevin Bacon's gonna grab this ball and definitely move off the sideline. He's fearful of a surf. Two that block is gonna break the armor number eleven gets a KO on Nave. Boy, oh boy, what is this? What is this? This is a one v one v two. It's a ten v nine on the pitch. One man player advantage for the dinner bell darlings. They are now back on offense here after they've recovered the ball. Great defense, man. I, man, <laughs> talk the Minotaur is really, really putting on a show. Both of these coaches are fantastic coaches. I think I think Clypheus is is at a disadvantage here. I think he's the underdog in a number of ways. Again, I think dwarves on paper, they're great right out of the gate. A TV 1000, great team with great pieces. I think Brett is much, much more difficult to play. Um, and uh, this is compounded by the fact that Doug the Minotaur, also a fantastic coach. And uh, Clypheus has... Uh, well, I don't know what his experience is, but I, I wager he has no experience playing Brett. <laughs> so, uh, so he's not only that he's got to learn Brett as he as he goes along here in the Chaos Cup. Yeah. 
One die push block on the ball carrier. Briefly considered re-rolling it. He's going to push the ball carrier on to the sideline. Will he follow up? He does. Oh, the sacrificial lineman. The sacrificial peasant. Not so trusty Patrick says he can surf that troll slayer. He can surf that troll slayer. Well, he could have. Two die block. Gets a pal. Double pals. Wow. Breaks armor. Oh, he's hoping for a lot here. Got a stun. That's all he got out of it. Mikey says, what settings do you have to have the ability to, to have the abilities pop up over their heads? Uh, you hit control. So once uh, once this block happens, I'll show you. So control will cycle through these various options here. And you can see all of the skills on a player, which is very, very convenient. Yeah, it's cool. It's nice. Stands up number seven over in the left wide zone in no man's land. Two die block back over in the right wide zone. It's going to get a knockdown here on number 10. Another thing we really haven't discussed, it hasn't really come up, but when you knock down a dwarf, it is a huge knockdown. Knockdowns are always good, of course, but uh, not only are you prone, you can't block when you're prone. You can blitz, but remember, you only get one blitz a turn. But more importantly, for dwarves, they only have an MA of four. And when you are knocked down, it costs three MA to stand back up. So when you knock down a dwarf, you're effectively restricting them to one MA on their turn. Turn 12. Final turn of the third quarter here. Din Dinnerbell Darlings currently with the ball in a precarious situation on the sideline. They're going to have to take a block to get back off this sideline. He does have an AG of three. If he thinks he can secure the ball, he'll hold on to it. If he thinks he can score, he'll certainly hold on to it. But also be cognizant of the punt. In Blood Bowl, uh, passing requires a pass roll and a catch roll. Well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Receiving a ball requires a pass and a catch. But you can pass to an empty space. And we call that a punt. So if you're in a bad situation and you have the ball, you might just punt it down pitch. He'd need to get in a better situation to do that. I don't think he really needs to punt here. I think he's in pretty decent shape. Here's the blitz. Two die blitz. Gets a push on number four, Pterodactyl. The pink Power Ranger. <laughs> SP Weaver says, Dwarf Pass. <laughs> but he has AG3, so long as it's not like a bomb pass, he could punt. Punts are still uh, uh, susceptible to interceptions, so you need to make sure you punt in the clear. But I, I don't think he needs to punt. I think he's in pretty pretty decent shape here. Blitz has been spent. He has movement left with the Blitzer. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he's got a GFI left. He's not going to GFI. 34 seconds. He is going to GFI. I stand corrected. GFI's forward. The ball carrier is going to move back to the six-yard line. There he is. Well done. Two-die block. Gets the knockdown on number five. He's looking for a nine. Doesn't get it. Follows up. And that'll be the turn. Fourth quarter begins. The Knights of Nuff will have just four turns to try to get this ball back and try to tie this ball game. Stands up number five, Sar, the blocker. Terrawind, you praise to Nuffle. Hoping the Knights of Nuffle can get something going here. I think the problem here is uh, that Doug the Minotaur is really holding the Knights of Nuffle back to having to play a bashy game. And because of that, this Dwarven team can outbash them just straight up, right? They're dwarves. So uh, Clyphus really needs to find a way to be able to leverage these skills. But man, it, it's tough on the best of days. But when you're up against this team, the Dinnerbell Darlings here and Doug the Minotaur, 
he he's just not gonna let you. <laughs> he's just he's gonna shut that down. Not so trusty patches. Thank you for the bits. Let's see some more mayhem indeed. Blitz coming up. Who's he going to take it on? Is he going to take it on the ball carrier? He is going to take it on the ball carrier. One die blitz. He's going to re-roll this, I imagine. Yes, he is. Only gets the push. That's unfortunate. Risky blitz. He was going for it. Only gets the push. He will not. He is going to follow up. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Good luck, Gnarly. <laughs> Blitz has been spent. Is he going to take this one die? He is going to take the one die. He gets the pal. This will not be a surf because there is a space to move into. Doesn't follow up. SP Beaver says I'm good with it. Oh, I got the skull over it mid pitch. SP Beaver says I'm good with this. Fewer breaths for me to deal with next week. Is that true? I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think he's got everybody still. <laughs> Two die block, double pals here against the lineman Noel. He's going to get knocked to the sideline. Two die blocks going to knock down, knock down the blitzer, gnarly. Not so Tristan Patch says, good thing those doors don't have guard yet. Yeah, they'd be. Even more disgusting. Two die blocks gonna be a both standing result here unless he re-rolls it. He might want to, or else he's in danger of being surfed. Yes indeed. He's gonna re-roll it. Gets the push. That's what he needs. He's gonna get another two die here. Gets the pow. Well done. When we talk about a surf, we're talking about a crowd surf. So you can push. Remember how we talked about on a block, you push your opponent into one of the three spaces behind you. If all three of those spaces are off the pitch. Then you push them in the crowd, and then the crowd has a grand old time. <laughs> Just starts beating up on the player. <laughs> SP Beaver wants a foul, wants a hundred assist foul. It's actually going to be a three assist foul if it happens. I can't imagine it will. Two die block, both standing results against the number two blitzer, Mnemonic. Ball carrier is going to move down pitch to lend the assist on number nine. Two die block gets the knockdown. Eight plus will break his armor. Breaks it indeed, gets a KO. Well done. Well done indeed. Good use of the ball carrier. New coaches are can be skittish. Uh, they don't want to put the ball carrier in harm's way, but uh, often you really don't need to be afraid of moving the ball carrier in. You can take a blitz with the ball carrier. You can even move him in to get, them to get an assist. If it's going to result in a defender getting knocked down or pushed away, often that's good. Really not a whole lot Clyphus can do here. Two die block. Breaks armor. Oh, it's always exciting when you break dwarven armor. Only gets a stun. You can see, like, look where his players are. He's got a player here. He's got players here. He's got players here. Players here. And a player here. Everybody. Everybody is marked. There's really not a whole lot he can do here. Doug the Minotaur has done a fantastic job 
of making sure this Brett team can't move. That's what they want to do. They want pitch control. They want movement. They want to be able to get to where they want to do, uh, want to be. And Doug the Minotaur has just said, no, no, sir. SPVer says, time for the YOLO dodge blitz. <laughs> Roll the skull, re-roll, got a skull again. Man, the Knights of Nuffle have not been praying to their namesake. <laughs> Turn 14 for the Dino Barrel Darlings. They're going to take off and start moving this ball down pitch. Kevin Bacon has it, right? He has an MA of six. He'll move the full distance. Not so trusty patches. Thank you for the bits. <laughs> that was a time for a Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> SP Beaver says he really did not send enough prayers to Nuffle pregame. He did not. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> Two dive block back of the line of scrimmage. It's going to get a knockdown. Chain push. Here comes the two die blitz. Two die blitz is going to result in a knockdown. Thank. Oh, he's going to get the push. Why? <laughs> Why not knock him down? <laughs> well, I, I guess he wants to move. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So a both down result. That is the one result that won't push a player back. Wrestle. Right. And, and uh, the wrestle skill uh, can be used in both down result. So on a, on wrestle, that player. Or both players will just fall prone. It won't be a turnover, but you won't get the armor break. Two die block gets the push here on number number five. Sorry, mid pitch. This is just a this is an MMA fight back at the line of scrimmage. Douglas Minotaur is just just making sure that there are no lanes for. Five is to move down and then taking the blocks as he sees fit. One die block gets a skull here. He's going to spend his final reroll. He's going to get the knockdown to the block skill. Well done. That'll be it. Turn 15 back to Clypheus. A whole, a whole bunch of dodges. <laughs> Let's see. It's one dodge. It's a bad one. <laughs> There's one dodge to take the GFI GFI Blitz, I think. It's one dodge to a GFI Blitz. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, one. <laughs> well. <laughs> so it's a positive dodge here to a GFI Blitz. I, you gotta, right? Like, you gotta. Uh, so he'll be here. He'll be in a tackle zone. So this will be a positive dodge, which means he's going to get a plus one on his AG roll. And then uh, and then it's a GFI to get into position and a GFI to make the blitz. And then it's a one die blitz. <laughs> no, he's not even going to try. Boo. <laughs> he's going to go for the surf instead. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> He's going to try to take Kessel Bill out of this game. And he does! Oh my goodness! Whoa! Unfortunately, there's no long-term effect. Wow. Wow. Playing the long game. Playing, playing for the competition rather than the game. Well done. He can still mark the ball carrier. It's one less roll. Well, not anymore. <laughs> I mean, he can, <laughs> but now he's got to make a second dodge. <laughs> Tara, when you use that, I wanted to boost so much, but I'm trying to behave. <laughs> Wrestle skill gets used there, but that's going to be that's going to be it for this turn. Turn 15 for the dinner bell, darlings. Uh, do they... There is no reason to score on turn 15. They can go right here. Yep. Just hang outside the end zone. Nobody can get to him. Kevin Bacon 
on his own. Two die block, gets a skull. That'll be a turnover. Final turn of this game. The Dinnerbell Darlings are gonna win this one two to zero. Clypheus gets one final turn. Let's see a GG foul, shall we? <laughs> Uh, so Tressie Patches says a little up for Kevin. Yeah, he's going to get three SPP for the for the touchdown. He has three SPP now. That'll bring him up to six. That's enough to level him up. He'll get another skill for week two. Part of Blood Bowl. Uh, there's I mean, there's lots and lots of parts of Blood Bowl, but one big part of Blood Bowl, other than all the tactics, other than the strategy, other than choosing your, your race and the matchups and what players you want, is... Putting SPP on players. You want to put SPP SPP on players that you want them to be on. It, it seems obvious that you're like, oh, SPP, experience points. I'll just get them on everyone. Whenever I get them, that's always better, right? Wrong. You want to put SPP on the players who are going to get skills that will suit your play style, suit your team. Otherwise, what's going to happen is when they level up, they become more expensive, and that counts against your team value. And before the game starts, there's something called the inducement phase. Whoever has the lower team value is going to get the difference in one-time use gold called petty cash, which they can spend on inducements. That It's sort of an equalization tool in the game. So you really don't want to waste TV. You don't want to waste SPP. And you'll often see better players just sack, sack players that become too expensive that aren't pulling their weight. GG foul doesn't work out here. Needed a 5+, plus, only got a 3. Nupple is not pleased. <laughs> Just wouldn't let it happen. There's the score. 2-0, the Dinnerbell Darlings are gonna take this game. Who was on offense? Oh, that's that's the game. Uh, Clypheus was on offense. All right. Well done. What a game. Wow. <laughs> wow. The Dinner Bell Darlings are going to win this one. The Sunday Kid is the MVP. He's going to pick up five SPP. Noel himself was an MVP. You know what? All the all the knocks he took, I think he was an MVP. Let's take a look at the statistics here really quick. The Dinner Bell Darlings just commanding ball control. 81% ball possession with a nice enough while only having it for 12% of the game. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> what a game it was. SPP for the game, 11 SPP for the Dinderbell Darlings, nine for the Knights of Nuffle. That is perfectly acceptable. That's plenty. But as denoted, Kevin Bacon is gonna level up. Nobody else is gonna level up, but uh, getting a level up on week one is not bad at all. Whoo! <laughs> Man, yeah, look at the blocks. <laughs> look, at, look, look at this. Man, <laughs> it just, just a fight, just a bash fest. <laughs> Let's take a look at the uh, schedule before we leave for this evening. Three games down this week, five to go, three more that will air live. Tomorrow will be a double header. Uh, we have at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, that's UTC minus five. That will be Cetra Skellies versus the Baltimore Blitzers. Uh, Emin thought, Emin thought it. <laughs> Emin thought it versus OG Flavortown. That will be tomorrow at one o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then at eight o'clock that evening will be the Polka Rat Men versus the Dead Presidents. That's Artificial Bunny versus Avina Two. That's me. Uh, that will uh, so Cetra Skellies is Kemri. That will be against the Baltimore Blitzers. That are High Elves. And then Polka Rat Men, as you might imagine are Skaven, and that'll be against an undead team. Man, I really want to necro a, a gutter runner. Can I get that? Can I necro a gutter runner, please? That's all I want. <laughs> That's all I want. <laughs> Those will be tomorrow nights. And then on Monday, we will have the Carnivores versus Donkey Teeth. That is Kislev versus Wood Elves. Hooray for the return of what else? <laughs> Nick Satan versus Dead Fred. Two fantastic coaches. Nick Satan, the season one champion. Dead Fred finished last season in third place. Again, uh, that is bound to be a very, very good game. I'm excited for all these. I hope you are too. Uh, man, what a fun game this is, right? What other game can you have? Vampires and Skelly Men and, 
and wizards hidden in the stand and bribes to the ref and goblins on pogo sticks to play football. It is so much fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed tonight's game. I hope you enjoy the many, many, many more games we're going to have this season. And feel free to come play with us in uh, future competitions. Uh, remember, we have three opens in the year. And um, if you want to check us out, you can check us out here on Twitch. You can also check us out on our uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Mastodon accounts. And you'll be able to find the information for that right there on your screen. We also have a podcast and uh, archive games on YouTube. Be sure to check all that out. We have a website as well. Uh, play Blood Bowl, man. I love this game. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> and more people really need to know of its existence. <laughs> I just, I have a blast with it. <laughs> Again, very good game tonight. So much fun to watch. We have many, many, many more games this season to play and watch and get hype over. So I hope you'll, uh, I hope you'll stick around for those. And uh, until then, I hope you guys enjoy your evening. We'll see you back here tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Kemri versus High Elves. Can't wait. Have a good night, everybody.